Once you learn separation of variables, which is the most elementary method there is, the single, I think the single most important equation uh, is the one that's called the first order linear equation, both because it occurs frequently in models, uh, because it's solvable, and uh, I think that's enough. The, if you drop the course after today, you'll still have learned the most two important methods, separation of variables and first order linear equations. So what does such an equation look like? Well, I'll write it in, uh, there are several ways of writing it, but I think the most basic is this. I'm going to use x as the independent variable because that's what your book does. But in the applications, it's often t, time, that's the independent variable, and I'll try to give you examples which show that. So the equation looks like this. A, a func some function of x times y prime plus some other function of x times y is equal to yet another function of x. Obviously, the x doesn't have the same status here that y does. So y is extremely limited how it can appear in the equation, but x can be uh, pretty much arbitrary in those places. So that's the equation we're talking about, and, and uh, I'll put it up. This is the first version of it, and we'll call them purple. Now, why is that called a linear equation? Uh, the word linear is a very heavily used word in mathematics, science, and engineering. For the moment, the best simple answer is because it's linear in y and y prime, the variables y and y prime. Well, y prime is not a variable. Well, you'll learn in a certain sense, it helps to think of it as one, not right now perhaps, but think of it as linear by analog, the most closely analogous thing would be the equation, uh, an equ a linear equation that looked like, a real linear equation, the kind you studied in high school, uh, which lo would look like this. It would have two variables and uh, I guess constant coefficients equal c. Now that's a linear equation and that's the sense in which this is linear. It's linear in y prime and y, which are the analogs of the variables y1 and y2. Uh, a little bit of terminology, if c is equal to zero, it's called homogeneous the same way this equation is called homogeneous, as you know from 1802, if the right-hand side is zero. So C of X I should write here, but I won't. That's called homogeneous. Now, this is a, f a common form for the equation, but it's not what's called standard form. The standard form for the equation, and since this is going to be a prime course, of <laughs> prime course of confusion, <laughs> which is probably completely correct, but a prime source of confusion is what I meant. Uh, the standard linear form, and I'll underline linear, is the first coefficient of y prime is taken to be one. So if I divide you can always convert that to a standard form by simply dividing through by it. And if I do that, the equation will look like y prime plus. Now, it's common to not call it b anymore, the coefficient, because it's really b over a. And therefore, it's common to adopt a, yet a new letter for it. And the standard one that many people use is p. How about the right-hand side? We need a new letter for that, too. It's c over a but we'll call it uh, Q. So when I talk about the standard linear form for a, f for a linear first order equation, it's absolutely that that I'm talking about. 